Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY, where I like to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Welcome to my channel if you're here for the first time. I hope you'll stick around by hitting that subscribe button. Today I have my top 12 spring and Easter DIYs from the past two years. Here we go. first project is a welcome to our home sign with a planter using two of these long signs, a metal planter, some floral foam, some florals, some moss, and some twine along with that welcome metal word. So the first thing we're going to do is get our two long signs ready by removing the hangers and the tags and also the two galvanized hearts on the front. We will definitely hold on to those to use in the future. Go ahead and sand down those spots so it's nice and smooth because we want to use this front side of the signs. I like to use it because it has that um, space there between the three pieces that look like shiplap. So here I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. You could use white, you could use any color you want. And you can see I'm being very careful to try not to get any paint in those little cracks. So I'm going to do that to both of my signs. I believe I did two coats to cover the red wording. Now I'm just taking a black permanent marker from Dollar Tree and highlighting those spaces just to make them stand out a little bit more for the shiplap look on this sign. And like I said, I'm gonna use that metal welcome word and this planter. You could, if you don't have the metal word though, you could just paint on or write on the words. Next, I'm taking some of this mineral chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush it to give more of a worn look to my sign before we start adding anything to the front of it. Now on the back to connect our two signs together to make one larger sign, I am going to just hot glue some of these large craft sticks across the back. I believe I did about five or six of them and that will hold our sign together. Now to get a uniform look, just take a ruler and your marker and go down that space between the two signs where they are connected together. Now for the planter, you could definitely paint this. You can, I think, use nail polish remover or acetone to get the wording off of the front. I'm just taking this burlap and lace ribbon and I'm hot gluing it right over the words and then wrapping it around the back and securing it. You can see there that you have a little bit you can snip off and you can still see the words just a little bit, but now I'm going to take another piece of the ribbon and create just a simple bow and that will finish covering up those words. If you've never made a bow like that, you just tie it in the center with jute and then wrap a skinny piece of ribbon around the center. Here, like I said, I'm hot gluing that metal welcome word. I believe this was in the fall package of metal words and just taking some jute twine. I'm going to now make a hanger using the two outside holes there. Also to add a little decorative touch to the top of the sign, I'm going to wrap some jute twine around the top between the holes and the word welcome. For the rest of our wording, I just printed out from an online search the words to our home. And this is the way you can transfer the wording. If you don't have carbon tracing paper, scribble pencil on the back and then place your wording where you want it. Trace over it with the pencil on the front side and it will transfer the pencil to your sign. And then you can just go ahead and trace over it with a paint marker in whatever color you choose. This is a really easy and affordable way to get beautiful um, hand lettered words on your signs, even if you don't know how to do 
the hand lettering on your own. Now that we're done with our wording on the sign, go ahead and just put a ton of hot glue on the back side of your planter. And I'm going to attach this to my sign at the very bottom. So this could hang or it could also sit flat on a table or shelf. Just press that in there. And there you can see the bow on the front. Now just taking a brick of floral, floral foam, or you've seen me use pool noodles for this, go ahead and attach that to the bottom of your planter. Now normally I would put some moss over this floral foam, but I'm going to put so many flowers in here that you're not even going to see that brick. Here I really loved this blue. It's not a color I normally use, but I thought it was very springy. And then I do go ahead and add in some of that baby's breath as well. And I just love how this turned out for spring. Our second project, we're using a frame, some of these Dollar Tree plastic eggs, a wire mesh trash can, and also some jute twine. So the first thing I'm going to do is take Waverly chalk paint in the color pool. It's a really beautiful light blue, like a robin's egg blue, and I'm just going to give my frame a good coat of that. Then taking my trash can and some really good floral scissors, I'm going to carefully cut off the bottom of the basket and the top rim and then cut straight up to make one big piece. Now this is called wet distressing. If you don't have sandpaper or want all the dust, just take a damp paper towel on your chalk paint and rub it and you will get some beautiful distressing without all the dusty mess. And there's our frame. Here on the back, we're going to measure out how much of this uh, mesh from the trash can we need to give a beautiful chicken wire look. And I love that it's white. It just is really great for spring. So just keep trimming it and kind of pulling it um, sometimes towards the bottom of the trash can. The spaces are smaller, so you can just kind of stretch it, make it all uniform. Now this does take a little bit of patience. Hot glue it, hold it down because this is not really flat. You kind of have to weight it down with whatever you have on hand while the hot glue is drying. But this works really great and it does look awesome like some chicken wire. Now I decided to just use the blue and white eggs from these plastic eggs. And you can see I have my painter's tape there in the center to help me make a circle. If you use eight of these eggs and you glue them end to end, you will make a circle, a little wreath out of the eggs that we will hang in front of this frame. So just make a loop of some jute twine and then hang it over and glue it onto the back side of your frame and snip off any extra so it doesn't show through. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a jute bow to put at the top of our wreath as one little added touch. Just hot glue it to those top two eggs and I absolutely love how cute and springy and cheerful and simple this frame is. Our third project, we're going to use some five gallon paint stir sticks, some of those little white metal buckets from the wedding section, some succulents and some tumbling tower blocks. Now I took two packs of these paint sticks and I did cut them right before the indent or the handle. So I'm going to make a box with these, a long box. The ends of my box are going to be tumbling tower blocks. So I'm going to end up using five tumbling tower blocks glued together on their long side for the ends of our box. Here you see me using my Gorilla Wood Glue to glue those together and let them dry. Now, I didn't want anything on the bottom, so I did put some glue very carefully on the side of these sticks and just let them dry really well. So I have two paint sticks as the bottom, then putting some glue on this set of tumbling tower blocks. I'm just going to hold it in place there. You'll see that there is a little bit of space on either side 
but that will be taken up by our little side paint stick you'll see here in a second. So now I've run some glue on the side there and then on the end of the stick I'm fitting in and it fits in there perfectly. So you're gonna go ahead and wood glue everything together, kind of squeezing it to make sure it all holds and is straight. And here's the other side on our box. Now you don't have to do the metal tin can buckets. You could just keep the succulents in the little plastic square containers they come in. That would be just as cute. But I liked these metal buckets. I wanted to use them. So I'm just taking the foam out of the square container and squeezing it into the metal bucket, putting a little bit of moss on top of that painted black area, and then sticking the succulent in. So just upgrading it a little bit to look a little more high end. And I think it looks super, super cute this way. Once we've sanded down any places where there's glue or rough edges, I'm going to give this entire box a coat of Waverly chalk paint in truffle. It's just a dark chocolate brown and it will cover this wood easily in one coat. Just make sure you do the inside, the outside, and the ends. And then all you have to do once it's dry is take your little succulent buckets and arrange them inside and you have a really cute farmhouse high-end looking decor piece that you can display year-round. For project number four, we're going to do a re religious Easter decor piece with this wood crate, some sticks, some floral foam, floral moss, and these moss-covered stones. So this crate I picked up at a thrift store. I'm going to give it a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. I will say that crates do take a little bit of time to paint just because of all the little crevices, but it's definitely worth it for the overall finished look. So give that a really good coat of paint in whatever color you want. Then using some floral foam and then some moss, we're going to put that inside our crate. Now I'm going to take some sticks from my yard and I'm making three crosses. I did make the center one a little bit larger. And then once I've glued the horizontal stick on there, I am attaching a piece of jute twine with a little dot of hot glue. And then I'm wrapping it kind of in an X where the two sticks are connected together just to give it a little more of a realistic cross look. And just attach that at the end with a little dot of hot glue again. Once you have your crosses done, you can go ahead and just stick those down in the floral foam through the moss and put the larger one in the center. And then you can see I did put the two smaller ones a little bit in front on either side. Here I printed out the words he is risen and this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree you can see right through it so taking my black paint marker I'm just tracing it onto the front of the burlap ribbon and then we will attach this to the front of our crate and there you can also see I took some of those moss covered stones and glued three of them around the base of each cross for project number five we just need one of these square signs this Easter card and some chalk paint. So just remove that raised part in the center. It doesn't matter if it's a circle or whatever shape you're going to be covering it up. And then I'm using Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper. I'm going to paint the inside of our box and even the inside of the frame. You'll see here, this is a beautiful color. And if you look at the card, I'm pretty much using two paint colors that match perfectly with the image on the card that I'm using. So modify this for whatever card image you want to use. 
Next, I'm taking moss. This is a darker sage green. Go ahead and paint over whatever your center image is. It, you might not see it, but at least if you do, it will all blend in with the project. We're also going to take that same moss color and very carefully go around the, ed the front edge of the frame. And then we will also, in a little bit, do around the outside of the frame. Now, these cards for a dollar, sometimes you can find really, really neat images that I don't mind taking apart the card to use. So here you can see this is going to fit perfectly inside this square box. I'm just going to put some hot glue on that adhesive foam tape and stick it right down on that circle. It even has a little ribbon bow on the front. So, so cute. Here I said we're going to take that moss paint and also paint around the black that's around the outside edge of our sign. Then just putting some hot glue back on that raised part. We're just going to hot glue this back down, make sure we have it going the right way, into the center of our sign. Now these signs, they can be hung on the wall or can stand on the shelf, which I love the versatility of it. And how cute and simple you can do this idea for any season or holiday. For project number six, we are making a porch sign with this big piece of wood. It was curved. I got it from a Home Depot like scrap pile. I'm gonna spray paint it white with this Rust-Oleum Satin in Blossom White. Then I'm going to take this Welcome Spring banner that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use these as stencils. The letters are very large. I'm going to use this wood looking contact paper and we're going to trace out just the word spring with this wood contact paper. So I love finding things that I can use as stencils and just reuse them over and over. So the thing about the contact paper is it wants to roll up on you, so you do need to kind of weigh it down a little bit. And then just taking a Sharpie marker, go ahead and flip your letters over so you're, tr you're looking at the back side and then trace the letter with your Sharpie. You're gonna do that for all six letters, and then we're going to cut them out of the contact paper. I'm also going to use this Hello World wall sticker. I'm actually only going to use the two sets of flowers. So really look at wall stickers. You don't have to use the entire um, thing. Look at how you can cut things apart and really um, modify Dollar Tree items for your purposes. Now I did cut those flowers out, cutting away that light bluish gray background so that I just had the flowers and the leaves. So we'll do that for the set of three that will go at the top of our sign and also the set of three for the bottom. Now this is just like on the welcome to our home. This is just the word hello. And again, I'm just going to scribble some pencil and then transfer it to the top of my sign. Now I do have some carbon paper that comes with stylus. Um, in my Amazon storefront if you're interested and want to check that out. It really is an affordable um, tool to have in your craft room. So now that the word hello is there, we can kind of space out how we're going to put our letters to spell spring. And we're also going to fill in, trace, and then fill in the word hello with our black paint marker. So the contact paper to put these down, I suggest just peel a little bit from the top and then as you press the letter down, you can peel the rest of the backing away. Now these letters were so large, I, I had to stagger them on my sign to get them all to fit and then I did outline them with black and I love how this turned out with those flowers at the top and bottom. 
it looks like something that I would find at Hobby Lobby. For our next project, I'm taking another one of these long love signs, removing the hanger and the galvanized heart again to save for another day. I'm also going to use some wood letters from Hobby Lobby. Um, they do come two in a pack, but I like it because you can choose just the letters that you need. And they're like $1.47 for two letters. For this one, I'm going to use this lighter sage green is called celery. And like we did in an earlier project, I'm going to do my best to not get any paint into the little cracks there of our sign. Here's those wood letters I was telling you about. So I got a pack of H, a pack of M, and a pack of E. I'm sure I'll use the second letter sometime soon. Now these I'm doing with that darker sage green that's called moss that we used earlier. And I just like how we've got the two tones of the green. Taking some of our truffle chalk paint, I'm just giving a little bit of a worn look to the back of our sign here before we put everything all together. I decided to also use truffle on my letters. It was too hard to use the brush, so just using my finger, I went around my letters, and then once that's dry, I am going to sand it a little bit. So using one of these metal flowers in the spring section at Dollar Tree, you can keep it the color that it is. If you don't like the color, go ahead and paint on it. I kind of liked the purple. Um, you can, like I said, make it whatever color you want. Here now I'm sanding those edges where I did the truffle and I just love how worn and old this looks and just how simple and calming with the greens. So what would you do with the flower? Would you leave it the purple or would you make it a different color? Now just hot glue the letters to the front there and the flower for the O. And the last step is just to add a jute twine hanger if you want to be able to hang this sign. I'd love to know in the comments what are some of your favorite colors to decorate with for spring. I really do like the different greens. I tend to add in some light blues um, and pastels for spring as well. And here's our finished product with our home sign just using a few craft items. For project number eight, I'm going to use two of these wooden rolling pins, some of this Easter berry garland from Hobby Lobby, three glass bowls from Dollar Tree, and some of those blue pebbles. So what I did here to make three candlesticks, I kept one rolling pin, the normal size, and then with my second one, I cut about a four inch piece off to make three different sizes. Now these are some four inch wood rounds you could get from Dollar Tree. I believe these were a little less expensive at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to paint all six of my wood circles with the moss chalk paint. And then my three rolling pin sticks with mineral. Mm -hmm. Once those are all dry, I'm just going to use my Gorilla Wood Glue and first glue the rolling pin to the bottom wood round. And then once those are dry, we'll flip it over and glue it to the other wood round to make our three little pedestal candlesticks. And here's what they look like when they're all dry and the different lengths. Now, like I said, I got this Easter um, berry garland from Hobby Lobby when it was 40% off. So it is more than a dollar, but I believe you get more than you do on the Dollar Tree berry garland. But if you find it or you want to use something different, you could wrap this in ribbon if you wanted to. Just wrap something to add a little color to the stick part of the candlesticks. Hot glue it at the top and the bottom and you're good to go. So do that to all three of your candlesticks. Then I took some of this light blue uh, gravel. 
I did put one bag of it in each of my three glass bowls. Of course, you don't have to do three candlesticks. You could do two, you could do one. This is just what I decided to do to make a nice little candlestick trio, the gravel and then a tea light. And here's how the finished product turned out. For project number nine, we're going to use some of these small little pots, various acrylic pastel paints, some floral moss, and some floral foam, and some plastic spoons. So these are the Dollar Tree pots that are the smallest size that come three in the pack for a dollar. I'm going to just give them a solid coat of Waverly chalk paint in white, and then taking some masking tape or painter's tape, I'm going to tape off that rim around the top there because each of those rims, I'm going to paint a different pastel paint color. So I really do think that the acrylic paint goes on better when it has that white chalk paint underneath. Um, it just doesn't soak into the pot. So we have a blue, a pink, a green, a yellow, and a lavender. Then I'm gonna just hot glue a small piece of floral foam into each pot and then cover that floral foam with some of our moss. Now, this is one of two DIYs in this video that can be used as place settings, or not place settings, like a place card, a name card type of thing for an Easter dinner. So this one is more kind of for kids maybe, or a um, secular Easter celebration. Um, and then the other one I'm gonna show you will be more like for a religious Easter celebration. Now taking our plastic spoons, you will need to do at least two coats of the acrylic paint on the shiny plastic, but I did the same colors as I did the rim on the pots. And once those are dry, go ahead and take a Sharpie and add two little tiny chick eyes and then with a small paintbrush and some orange paint, go ahead and paint just a little triangle for the beak. Next, I decided to give each of my little chicks a little jute twine bow at the neck there. You could use ribbon for this or um, a thinner jute twine, whatever you'd like. I just thought it was a nice little decorative touch. Looks like a little bow tie on each of our chicks here. So just hot glue that to the top there of the handle of the spoon and give them each their little bow tie. Then go ahead and just poke them down into your floral foam so that they're sitting right in the center of their matching colored pot. The great thing about this is you can make as many or as few of them as you want. And then the last thing I did was I took this decorative paper punch that I had and just cut out this little shape with white cardstock. And I'm adding the names for our kids and just hot gluing that to the handle of the spoon. If you don't have the tag, you could just cut little rectangles of paper for the name tags, or even use those magnetic, or not magnetic, chalkboard uh, little clips that Dollar Tree sells as well. Super cute. For the next project, we're going to use one of these Easter tag signs, one of these wood happy Easter signs with the bunny and some paint. Now I wanted just the bunny, so I'm just kind of drawing where I'm going to cut. You can use a little hacksaw like this. You can use a utility knife, or if you can get to it with scissors, this is really thin and you can just cut with scissors. So we're going to use the bunny and save the Happy Easter wording for another time. Just sand those little loose edges there. Now taking our tag sign, I love how this one is scalloped at the top rather than the straight edges from Christmas and Valentine. Scrape off as much of that glitter as you can and then we are ready to paint. I'm using again that beautiful light blue color called Pool and I just probably did two coats 
over the front to cover up the design. Then taking our light sage called celery, I'm going to just give our bunny here one good coat of this beautiful green color. Now, although I loved this blue color, I didn't like how flat it looked, so I decided to take some white chalk paint and this chip brush and kind of give a feathered white edging around the tag. It just kind of blends in a little bit towards the center and then fill in a little bit of whatever's left on my brush in the center of the tag. Then just go ahead and glue your green little bunny right in the center of the wood tag. Add the jute string back to hang the sign back at the top there. And then I wanted to add a little something for this bunny. You could make a bow out of ribbon. I had this one made out of a burlap ribbon that I'm gonna go ahead and glue right there at the bunny's neck. And then this sign will be all finished. I love how clean and modern and simple this looks. For project 11, here's that other set of place markers I was telling you about. We're going to use more of these mini pots, some bamboo skewers, some moss and floral foam, and some purple felt. So this time, instead of giving it a solid coat of the white chalk paint. I wanted it to look a little rougher, so I'm letting some of that terracotta color come through. And then I am on the inside going down a little ways with the white chalk paint. Now, however many of these you're going to make, that's how many bamboo skewers you're going to need. And I'm just using my antique wax and lightly coloring my skewers with a sponge brush and then letting those dry. Then with each of my skewers, I am cutting two pieces. The pointy side will be our vertical piece of our cross, and then I'm cutting a horizontal piece that we will then glue together with a small little dot of hot glue, uh, a little bit like the crosses we made earlier on in this video. And once all of those dry, we will also do the jute twine crisscross where those two pieces match up. Again, put some floral foam and some moss into your pots and then stick that bamboo skewer cross right on down into the center. Now I wanted to take a piece of purple felt and cut some skinny strips that I'm then going to drape on the cross. You can see how I'm gonna do that here. So it's kind of down in the front and then drapes over We'll call it the two arms of the cross and just get it how you want. You might have to trim it a little short depending on how tall your cross is and then just use a couple little dots of hot glue to get it to stay in place how you want it to look. And here's how it looks with the felt glued on. The last step I decided to use plain colored tumbling tower blocks for the names for this. And so I'm just using a Sharpie to write everybody's names. And then I'm not going to glue these, I'm just going to set them in the pot there at the base of each of the crosses. This way it's very easy to change these out for whatever names you need. This could also make a great little Easter craft for preschool or Sunday school or for grandkids. And I love how they turned out and I plan on using them this Easter for our dinner. The last project for today's video is probably my favorite. This is using four five by seven frames, four paint stir sticks. 
and then some other items that I will tell you about in just a moment. The first thing, yes, we are making a window. However, um, I made some changes to this so that it really makes it look more like an actual window and not just four frames glued together, but that's what we're starting with. So taking E6000 and hot glue together, I have these frames face down and I'm going to glue two together and then the other two together. And I like to use these clamps from Dollar Tree. Before they had the mini ones, they had these bigger ones in the um, hardware section. But whatever you can use just to make sure these um, dry completely straight together. I used these larger heavy duty clamps, two on each set of frames, and it really did the trick to make sure they were completely straight and stuck together. Now, while those frames are drying, I am taking four pieces of five gallon paint stir sticks and I am going to give them a coat of our truffle chalk paint, mostly because I want them to match our frames. So two of these are 16 and a half inches and two of them are 15 and a half inches. Those measurements may change depending on which frames you use. So like I said, we're gonna paint these completely with our Waverly chalk paint in truffle. And then once our two sets of frames are dry, we're going to glue those two sets together and just kind of move our clamps around until all four of our frames are dried in a window shape. I decided to make this really sturdy. I'm taking some more of those large craft sticks and I'm just hot gluing them wherever two frames are connected together. This will just secure those places where they meet so that our window will not fall apart. Go ahead and rub out any glue that might be um, showing through. And I would also add, I would take some spackle and right where I was rubbing, where the four frames connect together, I would fill that in with some of the Dollar Tree spackle just so that crack is not there, but next time. So here you can see I'm taking the paint stick pieces and framing out our window. So the 16 and a half inch pieces are going here on the long sides and then the shorter ones will go on the top and bottom. So again, E6000 and hot glue attach those pieces of paint sticks. And I love how this really frames out the window and actually makes it look more realistic like an actual window frame. And now that we've added those paint sticks, I'm going to add more craft sticks to where the paint stick is connected to the frame, just again to secure our decoration even more. Once everything's dry, you can go ahead and give it another little sanding to make sure you don't have any glue spots showing through. And then to make our window a little more rustic is why I wanted that dark brown background. But now I'm taking my white chalk paint and kind of what I call doing a messy paint job. It doesn't have to cover completely. You, If you paint too much, you can sand some of it away. We just really want this to look like an old wood window. Here you can see I'm just giving it a little bit of a sanding to show a little bit more of that brown coming from underneath. Now for the decorations for our window for Easter and spring, I'm gonna take the little bunny off of this Easter sign. I love that he has a little bow kind of like the one we did on the tag. But before we put it on our window, I am going to try and remove as much of the glitter as I can. And then I am going to end up just giving it a coat of white chalk paint. You can see how much brighter that white is. 
and just cover over that glitter it's fine it will not fall off once there is paint on top of it so go ahead and give that bunny a nice white um, another option you can paint a cross dollar tree has wood crosses they don't look like this this is one for my stash but you can definitely um, find a wood cross at dollar tree to paint white as well for this project Now to make the bunny look a little more worn and rustic, I am gonna take some antique wax and just kind of go around the edges with it and then come back and blend it in as well as put a little bit on the inside of each of the ears. Next, I'm going to take one of these adhesive hooks and the only kind I could find were the silver, so I am going to give this a coat of white chalk paint so that it won't be as noticeable on our window frame. Once that's dry, we'll go ahead and peel the sticker off the back, add some hot glue, and we're going to attach this right here at the top of our window. We can change out, we can hang a wreath on it for spring or for any season. We can also add either our bunny in the middle got to add that bow back on and then with a jute string we can hang the bunny as well or the cross Like our small little crosses for our Easter dinner table, I decided to also take some felt and drape that purple felt on this larger cross as well. It did take a little bit more obviously and just trim it and hot glue it in place. And we'll add a little jute string hanger to the cross as well. You can change out this window decor, like I said, for any season or holiday. So here is just our plain window and then hanging the spring wreath on it. And then you can add the cute little wooden bunny or the wooden cross for Easter. I love how versatile this project is and how you can change it out for your decor or whatever season or holiday. Thanks again so much, you guys, for joining me today for my top 12 spring and Easter farmhouse DIYs. Please let me know in the comments which were your favorite. Hopefully these were ones that you have not seen before as I've had a lot of new subscribers since these DIY, DIYs were first published. So be sure to also check me out on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.